So let's bring in Republican Congressman Ed Royce. He's the chairman of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. He's spearheading today's review. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you for joining me. Good to be with you. Nice to have you here. The debate over the president's war authorization is about to begin, as you well know. Some predict it will take months and ultimately fail to come to a vote. What do you say? Well, th this is uh, just the first step in the process, but today my committee starts the hearings uh, to look into how we, at the end of the day, give the commander-in-chief the authority necessary to decisively defeat uh, ISIS. And as we debate, of course, the problem on the ground is that ISIS has about 30,000 fighters, and so far uh, we haven't seen them decisively pushed back. So our hope here is that we conduct this debate in a way that's bipartisan, that brings everybody together. But let's keep in mind, we've got Jordanian, we've got Kurdish, we've got Arab tribes on the ground right now that need to be uh, encouraged to take on and defeat ISIS. And every day that we wait in terms of being successful is another day of recruitment for ISIS up on the Internet where they say, hey, we're, we're continuing to win, we're continuing to advance they're not push rolling us back and they need to be rolled back as you heard um, the speaker uh, John Boehner he doesn't like the president's plan he said quote if we're going to defeat this enemy we need a comprehensive military strategy and a robust authorization not one that limits our options any authorization for the use of military force must give our military commanders the flexibility and authorities they need to and protect our people, I have concerns the president's request does not meet that standard. Do, do we really want to give the president carte blanche on this? Well, we're going to hear from military commanders in terms of what they feel they need in order to be successful. And, of course, one of the strategies here is to have the Jordanians and have the Kurds and have, as I say, those, those Sunni tribes lead in battle. But at the same time, we know that we're going to have to have airstrikes, right? And we can, we can certainly concur that originally in this campaign, the airstrikes were not robust enough. It was not the kind of air campaign that could prevent ISIS from taking those towns. We watched town after town as they advanced across Syria and then uh, across Iraq and, and took cities that, in which they could have been prevented uh, had we early on used robust air uh, operations and certainly we needed spotters on the ground right so now we're going to have to debate this whole question of, of spotters on the ground and what what does the president mean when he's talking about special forces or special well, operations well, let, let me ask so you about we'll, we'll that because sir, that. every yes. general i have spoken to says to defeat isis you need ground forces and who has the greatest ground forces in the world that would be the united states and of course and, and, there's oh, something well, in the I, president's proposal that says yeah. enduring offensive combat troops nobody quite knows what that means do you but let me ask you this if there's thirty thousand ground forces it, that ISIS has under its command. And if the Kurds have over 100,000, and if the Jordanian king is as angry as he seemed here in Washington uh, as soon as that story broke about uh, the burning to death of that young pilot, and we see the Jordanians step up and say, hey, these are our tribal allies in Syria. We can go in with them. Uh, and if we're willing to give them some level of support with special operations, uh, then it seems to me we've got three th special operations forces on the ground right now. This is going to be a complicated issue, but the next role in terms of uh, Congress's responsibility here is to hear from the officers, hear from my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, certainly hear from the president, the commander-in-chief, in terms of what he's asking for, and then, at the end of the day, produce that authorization that leads to the ability to de decisively defeat ISIS. Can I tell you exactly what that document looks like right now? No, because we haven't gone through the process. But that is the next step. That's the next well, requirement. Uh, the president has assured the country that we're not going to get into a another messy war like we were in Iraq. Can you assure the American people that, um, that America will not conduct an another all-out war that we eventually kind of don't win and lose and it's just hanging well, out there? Well, here's what I can tell you. I don't know anyone on the Democratic side or the Republican side that wants to put the 82nd Airborne into Syria or Iraq. What I do know, what I do know is that the general consensus is that the offensive operations should be led by the Kurds, by the Jordanians, by the Sunni tribes, etc., and that there is a role here in air support 
May, maybe some disagree with that, but it, it seems to be that not, to me that 95 percent of uh, those I speak to believe that the United States should be leading a robust air campaign, that there is a role here for special forces. I mean, they're on the ground now. The administration just put them on the ground some time ago, and they carry out such activities as, as uh, spotting in order to make sure that that those observers on the ground can call in those airstrikes to be effective, right? If what we want to see is these Arab troops and Kurdish troops be successful as they advance against ISIS lines. And for that, it's going to take a certain element of U.S. support in this. And this is what we're debating, but we're not debating putting in the 82nd Airborne. So I, I just want to put this within the parameters as I perceive it in terms of the discussions we're having here. All right. Congressman Ed Royce, I know you have a busy morning. Thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.